Thanks for tuning in for this message from Momentum Church. We invite you to subscribe to this feed to receive a steady stream of encouragement, inspiration and wisdom from God's Word. Amen, amen. The title of my message this morning is The Seen and the Unseen and hilariously, you can barely read unseen. <laughs> So it works quite well uh, in with my message. You've got to look hard to see the unseen. Amen. Amen. So we live in a physical realm, right? We all know and we understand that. We've got physical bodies. You can touch. We see. We, we see with our ears. We see with our eyes. Okay. We hear with our ears things that are going on around us. And we're bound by certain laws. And I'm not talking about government laws. I'm talking about laws of physics, right? No physicist here, not a scientist here at all, but you know, we understand the law of gravity, right? I'm standing here because there's a certain physical law that's keeping me bound to this earth and I'm not floating around. That would be pretty cool. There's laws of motion. I know that if I, I throw a tennis ball, it's going to get from A to B and there's laws of acceleration. My husband's kind of smirking at me now because he's going, what is she talking about? I know her. She's got no idea when it comes to this stuff. I should give him the microphone. He's more into this stuff. Amen. But God has produced this incredible physical realm that we occupy and that our bodies, our fleshly bodies occupy. But as Christians, we know there's another realm. There's a spiritual realm. This is the place where heaven is. Hallelujah. It's the place where the angels reside. Occasionally, there's crossing over, as you would possibly call it, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, but that, the laws that govern our physical realm don't govern the spiritual realm. It's different in that place. It's different in the heavenly places. Um, and... It's not always a place that we can see with our eyes. And I say not always, because sometimes people, God gives people a glimpse into what's happening in, in that place. And we can't always hear, but sometimes we do hear. Sometimes we've had plenty of people sharing when they've heard angels, right? Erin and Dan have both heard things going on and Gina heard things going on in spiritual places. And that's so exciting and so awesome. So you're probably wondering why I'm talking about these things today. Too often as Christians, we get caught up in the physical realm. We get caught up in what's going on with what we can see with our eyes and what we can hear with our ears. And I'm going to give you some examples, which I know that we've all been through at one time or another, if not right now. We don't have enough money in the bank to pay a bill. Who's been there? I've been there plenty of times. We lose our job. Yeah. <laughs> Tony, you might have get four from four here. Uh, now, we are diagnosed with some sort of illness, right? When we're, we're diagnosed with something that takes us by surprise, I can put my hand up for that one. A friend betrays us. Someone talks behind your back. Back in when I was a teenager, we used to call it getting backstabbed. Someone stabs you in the back. It hurts. Our landlord puts up our rent. That's a reality of the environment and the markets that we're living in at the moment. It's getting expensive. Cost of living just keeps going up and up and up. We have a conflict at work. I can put my hand up for that one plenty of times. Yeah, right. And it's stuff that goes on. In <laughs> hang on, hang on. I'm not the instigator. You two are laughing at me, right? I'm always, I'm always the innocent victim. Um, hallelujah. Uh, God is good. But there's so much that goes on in this physical realm and we get, we get consumed by it, right? I've had plenty of times. I mean, I basically was, was as, as close as you can come to say being bullied at work. I probably was. I'm just a bit tougher than some. You know, bullied at work, it made it hard to get up and get out of bed and go into work each day when I knew there was a woman there who was going to make my life hell emotionally and verbally abuse me, right? And talk about me behind my back and create my working environment um, to be very, very hostile. It's not nice, let me tell you. And at the time I was going through that, I was consumed by it. It was so hard to, to see past that. Um, but we all know that God's got a plan, right? 
God's got a plan in place, a purpose for you, a purpose for your life. And regardless of what you're experiencing right now in this physical realm, on this earth, in this fleshly body, God has a plan. And there is a reason and there is a purpose for everything because our God is sovereign. Amen. Amen. You have to believe that. It's really hard to believe it when you're going through something. It was hard to believe it when I received my diagnosis. I said, why me? It's not fair. This isn't right. But I had to hold fast to the truth and the knowledge that God is good. And he's, he's always working things together for the good and for the extension of his kingdom. Amen? Amen. And believe it or not, when we get focused on the stuff going on in the physical realm, we take our eyes off Jesus. We take our eyes off the author and the finisher of our faith. We take our eyes off the things going on in that spiritual place and we just get caught like a, like a glue or like a quicksand where we're caught in things and it feels like it's pulling us further and further away from what God has for us. And ultimately, that's the devil's plan for us, right? It's the devil's plan for Christians. We often think the devil's out to get more into hell than into heaven, and it's probably one of his goals, although I think that's impossible, a uh, conversation for another day. But, uh, but no, the devil's plan is to make you and I ineffective Christians. So it's not about whether we end up in heaven one day, because you probably are going to go there. And God, you'll meet God and let's pray. He says, well done, good and faithful servant. And he opens the door and you mosey on in and you go, whoa, good on me. I've made it. But what did you do with the time that you had here on earth? And if the devil makes you an ineffective Christian, my challenge to you this morning is, has he won? If you're not fulfilling the purposes and the plans that God has laid out for you, it's a sobering thought, isn't it? <clears throat> I've talked all over the place now. I've got to find where I am in my notes. I'm the type of person I don't want the devil to win. Who's with me? <laughs> Who's with me? Amen. He's a liar and a cheat and a thief and he's filthy, disgusting rubbish underneath my feet. And I will not have him win in any way, shape or form, including making me ineffective in the purposes and the plans that God has for me and for you. Amen. Amen. And that's what I want to encourage you with today. That's my message to you. One thing that I've learned with what I have experienced in the past couple of years is we don't have as much time as we think. And time goes really quickly, right? We all say it. We look back at the last year and go, wow. I mean, we're in August. Where has the year gone? And it feels like as you get older and older, time seems to go faster and faster. <laughs> Maybe that's another law, physical law that we have. I don't know. Maybe it's just age and the brain. But it feels like time gets faster and we're running out of time. We're running out of time to do, to fulfill the plans and purposes that God has for us while we're here on earth. Bad things happen and we all know that. And sometimes the things that we think are bad, maybe they're only bad to us. And maybe we need to take a step back and have a look at God's perspective about what's going on in our lives. We need to move from viewing things in the physical and we need to look to the spiritual, the eternal, and see what God has for our lives and the lives of our loved ones. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 to 18, Therefore we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day for our light and momentary troubles. I'm going to pause there for a second. <laughs> Who feels sometimes that their troubles are light and momentary? No, no, they don't feel light and momentary. I don't know what Paul was on about here. It doesn't feel, but what he's taking, he's taking a step back. He's taking a step back, and when you take a step back and you view things from God's perspective, it's gone like that. It's just a moment in time, in eternity. It's barely a blink. Amen? For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory 
that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Amen. And thankfully, God is so patient with us. I thank God for his patience with me. He's very patient with me. I'm the type of person that's got really high expectations uh, of myself in particular, and I know what I want to achieve, and you know I can see it there, and I want to go and get it. Bit of a type A personality, if you don't haven't met me already, and I just want to go out there and I want to get it. And sometimes I get really down on myself because the reality is I know what I want to achieve, and I want to go out and get it, and I sit on the couch and watch football, watch football all weekend, right? <laughs> I'm just like you, okay? There's, there's times in my life where I go, Lord, why? I, I understand what Paul said now. Why? I do these things that I don't want to do. I find myself doing these things that I don't want to do because I know God's called me to great things. I know God's called me to incredible things, all for the extension of his kingdom. And if I stop looking, because what I tend to do, I guess, is I get really focused, and then I go, oh, another month gone, another weekend gone, and I haven't done what I should have done. I was going to do this, and I didn't, and I was going to, and I get really down on myself, and I get really frustrated with myself, and then I just find myself just focusing on all that rubbish stuff, which again is exactly what the devil wants, is giving the devil exactly what he wants, because I'm becoming this ineffective Christian. I'm not doing the purposes and the plans that God has for me. I'm not following through. I'm not doing the work in the background to prepare myself, to nourish my soul, to increase my learning, to increase my skill. Whatever it is that God's called you to, it doesn't just happen overnight. You know, we get these prophetic words and we go, Awesome. All right, Lord, I'm just going to sit down on my couch and I'm going to wait for you to bring the opportunity in front of me on the platter in front of me so I can just stand up and feast on all the glory. And, you know, it's just we both know that that's we all know. Sorry, that's not reality. Right. That there are things. And if if you get a word from God, and if you've had a word from God in your life. You, it's up to you now to pursue that word. It's up to you now to align yourself with that word. And if, if you've been called to be uh, someone who helps in kids' church, right? If you, if you see yourself as a kids' church pastor, well, you're not just going to be the pastor tomorrow. You need to go and see Pastor Norell and say, what can I do to help? You know, you need to align yourself and you need to start. Sometimes that builds character, right, as we work through the processes and we start sometimes very low and we think, hang on a second, I was given the word to be a pastor. <laughs> this is not what a pastor does. And sometimes in God's timing, it takes a long time and we get frustrated because why? Our eyes are on the physical. Our eyes are on what we see and what we expect in our hearts and we get frustrated and we get impatient but we both we all know right God's called us to be patient it's a fruit of the spirit to be patient and to wait on the Lord and for his timing I'm going to press the iPad Romans eight twenty eight, and we know that all things work together for good we all know this passage to those who love God so there are some conditions. And to those who are called according to his purpose. So who loves God? And I, was, I would say to you who's called, but the reality is we're all called. Amen? Everybody is called. We think sometimes, oh, I haven't been called. Yes, you have. Yes, you have. Jesus said, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. That's a calling. It's saying, come to me, come and feast, come and dine, come and commune. That's what that, that word there means. It's just an invitation. So if you've received the invitation and you've responded and you now love God, so there is that, it's not just everything and anything works together for good. It's for those who love God. Um, so that means that we all qualify for that statement, amen? Amen, that's, that's worth an amen, that all things work together for good. When I was preparing this message, I heard, I heard it put this way, the truth of Romans 8.28 can change the way you think. It can provide a corresponding shift in your moods, emotions, and outlook. 
In time, it can actually transform your personality and alter circumstances in your life. It can turn troubled souls into people of confidence and good cheer. It's the secret of resilience and irrepressible joy. And this promise has your name on it. Amen. It meets the challenges you are facing right now. It's God's guarantee. I love it when God makes a guarantee for us. Amen. Amen. And Paul starts this verse with with two words, we know, which I've underlined up there. That means that's definite. It means there's no negotiation in it. And when there's definites in God, who knows that they happen? Amen? Amen? They do happen. Unfortunately, not always in our timeline. <laughs> they happen in God's timeline. Amen? And Paul writes in 1 Corinthians that all of God's promises are yes and Amen. We often get frustrated and impatient because we want things to happen right now. We see or experience an injustice and we want it made right. Not tomorrow, not next year, but now. It's even more frustrating when we see others not having to go through what we're going through. We say, why me, Lord? This isn't fair. I had something happen to me this week at work. (laughs) I jumped straight on the phone to Tim and I went, guess what? This has happened. What about me? And very quickly, it was probably about a 10-minute conversation because, again, what the Lord has brought me through and what I know, I said, but I know I'm frustrated and I'm disappointed, but I know that God's caused this to happen for a reason because maybe if I go down that path, I'm not available to take the path that he's got planned out for my life. And so in the moment, I was very disappointed as I'm being passed this information. But I'm sitting there going, okay, I'm just going to smile and nod. But inside, I'm like my pit of my gut, right? And the pit of my gut, the feeling in the pit of my gut continued. But my mind, I was taking control over it. And I was saying, you know what? God's got greater purposes and plans for me. It doesn't matter what happens in this place. I know my destiny in God. And if this is his purpose, because you know what? God can do anything. If it was meant to be, it would have been. That's, that's what I know for my God. And so if it was meant to be, it would have been. So if it hasn't happened, then I've got to step back. I've got to get rid of the flesh that's wanting this thing. And I need to say, not my will, Lord, but your will be done in my life. We have to remember that your race is your own. Things happen to us for a variety of reasons. And all of those reasons, they're either up to you, because God gave you choice, and he gave you free will to make choices and decisions, or they're up to God, because we believe that he is sovereign and he's planning out and laying out our life before us. I want to encourage you today that regardless of the stuff that happens to you, there is a greater purpose and plan And very often it leads to us to walk the path that God has laid out for us if we let it. If we let it. That's a big if. You've got to be prepared and willing to make the decisions and take the steps to walk in step and in tune with what God has laid out for you. I remember my parents teaching me when I was a kid, when you fall, you get up. You dust yourself off and you start again. I say that to my kids. They fall over. You'll be right. You'll be right. Just get up and keep going. Too often as adults, we wallow. Things don't go our way and we wallow. To me, wallowing is wasting time. It's wasting time. And I've done it plenty of times. And I look back and I go, you idiot. What were you doing? Didn't get you anywhere. It didn't help anything. And it certainly was not lining me up with what God has planned and purposed for me. If you want to achieve the purposes and plans God has for you, then we need to take our eyes off our problems, our eyes off our circumstances, and ask the Holy Spirit to open our spiritual eyes to see how God is going to use these things that happen to us for the extension of his kingdom. Amen. Now I'm going to switch to the Olympics. Who's watching the Olympics? No, I am. You are. 
because it's not in our house. Put your hand up. Who's watching the Olympics? Amen. It's so exciting. I love it. I love watching the Olympics. Just the con- You watch sports that you never would watch ordinarily. I was watching a uh, 10-metre air rifle. <laughs> it was fascinating. It was fascinating watching the... I'm like, I'm just thinking about how does it work and blah, 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 and I'm looking at it going, oh, I could do that. <laughs> Surely, they're just standing there pointing. I'm sure it's got a lot more to it than that. It's coming from the person that's never fired a gun, all right? So, <laughs> so yeah, I love it. I love the competition. I love the camaraderie. I love how nations get together and people get together. It brings us together. And like Tony said, it's an opportunity for those Christians to share their faith on the world stage. It's, it's awesome. And those different athletes that come from all the different countries. And there's always stories about how someone's overcome something incredible. There's always a great story of, of, you know, even those athletes that you're seeing just completely depleted and someone else goes and carries them across the finish line. It just warms the heart to see people being so generous to one another. But one, one thing that I've particularly loved um, this Olympics is this lady. Excuse me. She's, um, does anyone know who she is? Yeah, Jessica Fox. Oh, yeah. Sorry, gave that one away. And, and can you guess what sport she does? <laughs> kind of given that away too. <laughs> right, so she does the, uh, they call it one man, I think it's, but one, I'm going to say one person, um, the slalom for the kayak and canoe. Um, she was the Australian flag bearer this year and she was very, very chuffed to be given that honour. Uh, she actually said it was very difficult to kind of come down off the high of bearing the Australian flag and then get into competing because it was such an honour out of all of those hundreds of people that she was selected. This is her fourth Olympic Games. Fourth Olympic Games. That's pretty impressive, right, for such a physical sport. I looked up how many was like the longest who have competed in so many games. Um, there's some equestrian athletes, right? They're riding a horse. Uh, <laughs> I know it's hard, right? But, you know, physically the toll that it takes on their bodies to compete at a level um, where where they're where they're winning and they're performing right it's really hard to do that over I mean it's every four years so if she's gone to um, <coughs> excuse me four Olympics and I've put those out what I loved about what I loved about her story is is each and every year she's kept coming back each and every four years I should say so in 2012 she was 18 years old and she got one silver I think it was in the kayak race she got the silver she also does as I said, canoeing and slalom. Um, in 2016, she was 22 years old, she got a bronze. I mean, that's probably a little bit deflating. You always hope to come back the next time and perform a little bit better, or at least the same. And it was a bit of a, I mean, she still got a medal. We should go, oh, that's great. I'd be happy with any medal, right? I'd be happy just to be invited. Um, but, but, you know, to get the bronze, that would have been really tough. But she comes back again in 2020 as a 26-year-old. And that year she got a gold and a bronze. And that's pretty impressive. But she didn't give up. She didn't stop, she didn't retire, she didn't say that's enough, and she's kept working. And I mean, when you look at the, at the um, regime for these athletes, it's very grueling. It's extremely grueling. I think it was um, Katie Ledecky, I looked at her, uh, she's the American swimmer. And you know, they're doing like four plus hours in the pool a day. And like she's got all these meals scheduled out and then she's in bed by like 8, 8.30 p.m. to get up at 4 a.m. and do it all again the next day. And then not only four hours or so in the pool, there's like two hours in the gym. So it's like nearly six hours a day exercising. Now I know they don't have nine to five jobs like you and I, but that's tough. That's tough. There's going to be days where you don't want to get up and you don't want to do it. They experience it like us, but they keep getting up and they keep doing it. And this year, for those who don't already know, as a 30-year-old woman, she's won two gold medals and she's in the running now for a third medal. I think she qualified second fastest um, for the next race. And that was as at lunchtime yesterday when I was looking these statistics up. I don't know, I don't know when the race actually is. It's too hard to keep up with it all with the different time zones, but she didn't give up. She didn't go, okay, that's good enough. Now, she hasn't got a lot publicized on the internet about her life. I watched a few videos on her. I'm sure she suffered with injury. I'm sure she suffered with setbacks and illness right before events. 
It always tends to happen, but she's continued to persist and not give up, even though we all know what you feel like as a 30-year-old is very different from what you feel like as an 18-year-old, right? It's very different, and she's continued to persist, um, and now her achievements in her latter years have been greater than her former. Amen? John 16.33, from the message version, it says, I've told you all this so that trusting me, you will be unshakable and assured, deeply at peace. In this godless world, you will continue to experience difficulties, but take heart, I have conquered the world. Again, I encourage you today is not to see the trials, the pain and the hurt as a reason to stop, but as a reason to keep going with even more vigour and passion than you did before. My heart is certainly towards those Christians <clears throat> who are no longer in church, who are no longer running the race, who are no longer pursuing God as passionately as they had before. I've got a couple in my own family and it's sad to see. It's sad to see when people give up and they slowly wither away from, and the, the path diverges so strongly where I don't even know if they, you know, even believe in God anymore. And it's really, and I've got a real heart for those people because we all go through it. We're all tested. And we all go through the trials. And it produces, as we know, the other scripture, it produces character. It produces perseverance in us. Who here has had a word of God or a vision for their life that, they know is for the extension of God's kingdom. And I'm not just talking about being wealthy. I'm, I'm not just talking about being successful. We all have those visions, right? I'm talking about a word of God over your life for the extension of God's kingdom that you haven't yet seen come to pass in your life. Yeah, I think we can all say we're all in the same boat. <clears throat> Keep your hands raised if you've ever doubted and thought that it wouldn't come to pass. Amen. Yeah, we're all the same. We're all the same. Do you want to hear the good news? God hasn't doubted or forgotten the plans and the purposes that he has for you. God's promises are yes and amen. Nothing returns to him void. Amen. Amen. That means we don't have to know the how or the when. It's not for us to question. Our place is to align ourselves with God's word every single day and press on towards the goal that God has set for you. Amen. I want to read to you from Hebrews 12. And I really liked the amplified version, so I apologize it's a bit small, but I'll read it out to you. It's entitled in the Amplified Version, Jesus the Example. It says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, who by faith have testified to the truth of God's absolute faithfulness, stripping off every unnecessary weight and the sin which so easily and cleverly entangles us, let us run with endurance and active persistence the race that is set before us, looking away from all that will distract us and focusing our eyes on Jesus, who is the author and perfecter of faith, the first incentive for our belief and the one who brings our faith to maturity, who for the joy of accomplishing the goal set before him endured the cross, disregarding the shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God, revealing his deity his authority and the completion of his work. Just consider and meditate on him who endured from sinners such bitter hostility against himself and consider it in all comparison with your trials so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Amen. And then I'm just, just because it was really, really good, I'm going to read you the message version of the same, just because it, obviously we know the message version brings it down into our everyday language. It says, do you see what this means? 
all these pioneers who blaze the way, all these veterans cheering us on. It means we'd better get on with it. Strip down and start running, not physically, <laughs> and never quit. No extra spiritual fat, no parasitic sins. Keep your eyes on Jesus, who, began, who both began and finished this race that we're in. He ran that same race. Study how he did it because he never lost sight of where he was headed. That exhilarating finish and in and with God, he could put up with anything along the way, cross, shame, whatever. And now he's there in the place of honor right alongside God. When you find yourself flagging in your faith, go over that story again, item by item, that long litany of hostility he plowed through that will shoot adrenaline into your souls. Amen. Amen. No matter what you are going through, what he went through was greater. We all know that. He was betrayed by friends. He was physically abused to the point where they couldn't even recognize him. He did that. He did everything. And then when we look at what I'm, the fact that I didn't get some, some sort of nod at work, who cares? My purposes and plans are not for just this earth, they're for the eternal. They're for the eternal. What does God have planned for you that impacts his kingdom and impacts the lives of those around you for the eternal? That is what God has planned for you. It's great that we can have some success here on the earth. And yes, God does want that for us. But we have to keep our eyes firmly fixed on Jesus. We have to keep our eyes firmly fixed on him. And we read the word of God. That's what that's encouraging you to do. Read the word of God. Encourage yourself with it. Remind yourself with it. So that you're constantly, I mean, this flesh always arcs up against us, right? This is a daily battle. Paul said we take up our cross every day we can't become complacent we can't relax not when it comes to God's kingdom I know myself we were talking about I was talking about this with my mother-in-law how invigorated I am when I worship lead I can be exhausted actually I was a little bit exhausted this morning I haven't slept well and I've had a busy week and I said to my husband, you know what? I know that as soon as I get up, as soon as I get up, it'll be gone. And it has. It's completely gone. It's forgotten, right? Because I'm standing here doing the work of the Lord. Not my work. This isn't me. This is the work of the Lord. It's for his eternal purpose, for the extension of his kingdom. Amen. And it invigorates me. It inspires me. Even me in doing all of this and preparing and getting ready. It takes hours. <laughs> Right, Nico, Pastor Harry, it takes hours and hours and hours and I've got a full-time job and I've got kids and a husband and a household and all that stuff, but I love it. I love it because it invigorates my spirit, it invigorates my body because I know I'm doing the work that God has called me to. What has God called you to? What has he called you to? And what have you done last, from this last week? And what are you going to do next week to align yourself, to walk in the things and the purposes and the plans that he has for you? That's my encouragement for you today. I could not stand up here today without Jesus Christ. I could not do what I do. I could not have gone through what I have gone through except for the love and the hope that I have in Jesus Christ and what the Lord has given me and done for me and how now I just get excited. I get excited with the things of God because you know what? I What my world is, is this. What God's world is, is that, right? I can't even begin to think and imagine his purposes and plans. I can just, I get just a glimpse. You know, the word says we know in part. That's okay. I'm okay to know in part. I probably couldn't handle it if I knew in full everything that was going to happen. I might be a bit scared. I might be a bit intimidated. But God's given me just enough to show me what, what he wants me to do, to encourage me. God does the same thing for you. I'm not special. Well, I am. I'm his favorite. But you know what? I'll let you into a secret. You can be his favorite too. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Our God is that big. He's that awesome. I want to share with you. Sharon's not here today. She's in kids' church, is she? Um, we've both read this book. She was telling me about it one day. 
And I went, I've just bought it. I've just bought this book. It's awesome. Uh, Max Licato, Just Like Jesus, A Heart Like His. I love reading books um, that point me to Jesus, right? To get somebody else's perspective. It's always secondary to his word, but, but to give me another perspective on being like Jesus and walking in his footsteps. And this chapter is on finishing strong. And the section's actually called The Race that I want to read to you this morning. The word race is from the Greek agon, which we get the word agony. I went, oh wow, that explains a few things. The Christian, Christian's race is not a jog, but rather a demanding and grueling, sometimes agonizing race. It takes massive effort to finish strong. Likely you've noticed that many don't. Surely you've observed there are many on the side of the trail. They used to be running. There was a time when they kept with the pace. But then weariness set in. They didn't think the run would be this tough. Or they were discouraged by a bump and daunted by a fellow runner. Whatever the reason, they don't run anymore. They may be Christians. They may come to church. They may put a buck in the plate and warm a pew, but their hearts aren't in the race. They retired before their time. Unless something changes, their best work will have been their first work. And they will finish with a whimper. By contrast, Jesus' best work was his final work. And his strongest step was his last step. Our master is the classic example of one who endured. The writer of Hebrews from this chapter that I just read, goes on to say that Jesus held on while wicked people were doing evil things to him. That's verse 3. But the Bible says Jesus held on, implying that he could have let go. The runner could have given up, sat down, gone home. He could have quit the race, but he didn't. He held on while wicked people were doing evil things to him. That's our example. That's the God that we serve. It's going to finish up. Romans. I love, I love Romans. I'm sitting in Romans at the moment. I can't one, wait one day to meet Paul. Man, that guy was smart. I could just, there's so many things in Romans. It's like so meaty. Romans chapter 5. Verses 3 to 5, again from the Amplified Version. And not only this, but with joy, let us exult in our suffering and rejoice in our hardships, knowing that hardship, distress, distress, pressure, trouble, however you want to define it, it produces patient endurance and endurance proven character, which is spiritual maturity, and proven character, hope and confidence of confident insurance of eternal salvation. Such hope in God's promises never disappoints us because God's love has been abundantly poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. When things go wrong, I get it, we're human. We may have a moment where we're flooded with a whole lot of negative emotion. We get frustrated. We get disappointed. Sometimes we even get angry. That's normal, but we can't let the things that happen in our lives derail us from the call of God that we are pursuing. The amazing thing about God and his plans is that no matter where you're at today, you could have think, I've missed it. It's too late. Or maybe you had an opportunity before you and you completely blew it and the opportunity is now gone, long gone. It's entirely untrue. The opportunity is still there for you. That is how good our God is. Amen. We try to think like he thinks. We try to get it. We try to go, God, this is how I want it to work for me. It's not how it works. The sooner you actually let go of that, trying to control, the sooner you feel the freedom and the burden lifts from your shoulders 
and you can take a breath and you can rest in him. Rest in knowing that God is in control. Rest in knowing that regardless of what I see, regardless of what I hear, of what's going on around me, what people might have said to me or about me, the things that people might have done that have hurt me, the stuff that goes on that just doesn't make sense. And I can go, it's okay, God, because your purposes and your plans for me are greater. And I'm gonna choose to trust and I'm gonna choose to hope in you and I'm gonna turn my eyes off everything going on around me and I'm gonna fix them firmly on Jesus Christ, the author and perfecter, the word says, of our faith, perfecter of our faith. We need that faith, we need that faith, amen. And you know what Jesus said, you have faith of a mustard seed. Isn't that amazing? That our faith just needs to be so tiny so tiny, but it needs to be true. It's not a fake faith. It's not a name it and claim it. It's not a, I'm just going to keep telling myself till I believe it. It's truly knowing in your heart that Jesus, he will make a way for you. Amen. Amen. Why don't we bow our heads this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God, I just want to give you all the honor and glory this morning. I want to thank you for what Jesus did on the cross. I want to thank you, Lord, that you sent your one and only son to die for us so that we may enter into intimate relationship with you, that we might enter into that place, oh God, and commune with our heavenly father, the creator of heaven and earth, how big and awesome you are. And how amazing, oh God, that we as mere people, as mere humans, oh God, that you are mindful of us, that you care about us, that you meet with us and speak to us, and that you gave us the Holy Spirit to comfort us, to guide us, to lead us. Help us, O oh Lord, to hear your voice even more clearly. Help us, Lord, to not be discouraged by things that go on around us, Lord. But help us to see your vision, your plan, your path, O oh God, for the extension of your kingdom, O oh God. Not for our own glory, not for our own success, Lord God, but for the success of you. For you are a great and awesome God. And we want to give you our all, Lord Father. Lord, I just encourage this morning... If there's anyone here that has doubted and continues even now to doubt the plans and the purposes that you have for them, Lord. Lord, I just ask right now, Holy Spirit, that you would come and speak to them. I ask, oh God, for your word of encouragement, for your word, oh God, to be impressed upon them. Lord, that is the power of you, Lord, that you can speak to us all here right now, all at once, God. And I just pray, Lord God, that you would remind them of the purposes and plans that you have for their life. And I thank you, God, that we will not be intimidated, that we would not be scared, oh God. Lord, but we would embrace what you have for us and we would pursue you with everything that is within us, oh God. So, Lord, that as we finish our race, whenever that day is, whatever that day is when we finish, oh God, that we will finish stronger than when we started to give you all the glory, O oh God, to give you all the honor, Lord Father. And we give that to you this morning in Jesus' mighty name. If anybody would like any prayer at all, there's no real specific altar call for this, but if anyone would like any prayer, if you feel, if you felt that discouragement and you're finding it hard to come out of it, if you're in a place where it just feels like a constant onslaught. Let someone pray with you. Let us pray together. Let us believe together. If you don't know the purposes and plans that God has for you, if, if it's a bit murky and a bit unclear, I was like that once upon a time. I was like, I don't know what you want, God. I got no idea. I literally had no idea what God had planned for me. I'd love to pray with you. I'd love to pray with you. And let's see what God does. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thanks, Pastor Harry.
You've been listening to a message from Momentum Church. To get in touch, visit our website, momentumchurch.com.au or search Momentum Church Gold Coast on Facebook. Facebook.